Hello for everybody. In español decimos buenos días a todas y todos. I want to thank the organizer of this meeting and I want to thank you to be here on Sunday morning. I hope that I could contribute to your fight for a better world. We need that. We need you, everybody, the engagement of yourselves. For preparing this talk, I wrote quite a lot because I want to do a book, <laughs> <laughs> another book. So you, will, you, you were the pretext of that. You know? As we are going to talk about the left, I think that we should know what I understand by left. So the first thing that Fred will do is to read the definition of the left. Therefore, I believe that the left is a set of forces that struggle to build a society as an alternative to the exploita exploitative capitalist society with its logic of profit. The fights for a society of workers, of organised workers, are based on a logic of humanitarianism and solidarity, one that is orientated towards satisfying human needs. Uh, it's a set of forces that struggle to build a society free of material poverty and spiritual miseries that capitalism engenders. And it's a society that cannot be decreed from above, instead must be built from below, where the people play a protagonistic role. That is to say, a socialist society. In the past, in the 60s, 80s, Pertenezco a la generación de la Revolución Cubana. So I belong to the uh, generation of the Cuban Revolution. I have quite a lot of accumulated youth, as you know. <laughs> uh, in that moment, the definition of the left was reformist or revolutionary. The revolutionary were the ones that defend the armed struggle, and the reformist were those who think that has to get the institutional way. I was, um, how you say, a mí me llamaban reformista. Uh, they used to call me a reformist. I was a teacher in the University of Marxism, and I had the MIR of Chile, that was a very radical army group, and I was reformist for them, because I was defending Allende's government. I want to begin by talking about why we need, very rapidly, a political instrument, why the left needs a political instrument. I think that we all have seen all these uprisings in the world. We have seen many in Latin America that arrive to even to get out presidents from their governments. But then, nothing. Huh? For being able to transform this uh, mobilization of people against, because each day more, the people reject the system, reject the uh, neoliberal globalization. Uh, you need uh, a political instrument. Why? Because first of all, the conscience of the people, what the people, the, the, the vision of the world they have, is the vision that has been given to them by the media. And uh, you have to open their mind to see where are the causes of their uh, Malestar, no? the sufrimiento. Of no? their suffering, what are the causes of them? <laughs> you need also a political instrument because you have to, uh, to construct, to build a program, the project of society, to, to show the goal. The people doesn't, doesn't fight if they don't know quite clearly what, what is uh, the object of the fight. No? And this is not a very easy uh, thing in this moment when it's so complicated the society, it's so complicated the economy, that you need really knowledge to be able to create a program, a project of a new society. Hmm? Um, also, we have a very, very strong enemy to fight against, and uh, this enemy should be defeated by a very um, we, we could say scientific and artistic, and I will explain why, way of doing that. Because uh, the politics, the capacity of fighting uh, with, wood, uh, with good results of an enemy so powerful is really not only knowledge, it's also art. And there are some people that are more 
eh, están más dotados para hacer la política que otros. Es un arte. There are others uh, the uh, reasons, but I think th those are the most important. No? And then, what we understand by politics, that is very important, because the left understand, the revolutionary left understand politics in a different way than the bourgeois. In general, the definition of politics in the university is the art of the possible. The politician is the one that knows quite well how to take advantage of the circumstances to do something. No? For, no, for us, <laughs> it's not that the, the conception of politics. The conception of politics that we have to have if we are revolutionary is the art of doing possible what now seems to be impossible. But this is not because we are voluntaristic. It's not that we want to. It's because we have to be able to create the forces, the social forces, that will permit us to win the battles in the future. So the politics for us is not to win some puestos in the Senado, or in the Cámara. Uh, so to just uh, win a few seats in the Senate or in the House of Deputies. No, is to be able to build forces from below to organize people, that is, the, uh, the, if we want to win the battles, we need to construct social forces. Hmm? We could win, and, and I am not against winning the presidents, as I will talk after, no? <laughs> <laughs> or Senate, or whatever. But if we don't build forces from below, this is not a very sure, uh, Triunfo. Un tri es un triunfo débil. It's a very weak victory. I should tell you that my uh, knowledge comes from two big sources, you could say. I have studied Lenin, all his work, the many tomes, no? and I have put the microphone to the fighters in Latin America. And I have learned quite a lot of them. So the jointure? <laughs> La, el, el, la juntar estas dos uh, fuentes de conocimiento, ¿no? Uh, so bringing together or uniting these two sources. Is uh, what permits me to tell you what I am telling you. So I cannot, I would have not be able to speak to you if I have not be in the places where the people were fighting. Because we learn very much and much more in the fights of the people that in books. Our concept of politics is also the concept of this is a class struggle. This is not Napoleon or Chavez or Evo. This is classes, this is people fighting. Those who dominate and explode and discriminate the others and those who want to liberate themselves from that exploitation. This is the history. And the history, uh, Marx, what he did was seeing the history, interpreting the history. Because some writers says the violence of the Marxists. And Marx was not violent. Marx saw the violence because there was exploitation and there were slaves that wanted to be liberated, there were serfs that wanted to liberate, or proletarians that wanted to liberate. This was the, what was there. Marx saw that and interpreted scientifically what he was seeing. So violence is not our, our and I will explain a little more, later that. So, this, the conduction, uh, the political instrument is uh, the instrument, uh, and I have lost the idea, um, is an instrument. Why I prefer instrument than party? Because the party, uh, the parties in the past were many times, especially for the Marxist Leninists and happily, the objective. No, we, we, we have to build a party, very strong party. C the people comes to the party. We have meetings in the party, formation courses in the party, no? all in the party. No? And we copy. In America Latina, I don't know if you have done that, but we copy the Leninist party that was a party for the totalitarian Tsarist state no? 
to apply that mechanically to, in my case, Chile in a bourgeois democratic system. And Lenin says quite clear, the, the, the party or the or political organization is an instrument for the class struggle. So it should be adapted to the reality that you have to work with. No? It's different, the party in a repressive totalitarian state and in a bourgeois democratic state. Well, um, and if you, you have this instrument to direct to conduct the class struggle, because as I have said, only spontaneous reactions don't conduct to the possibility of changing the system that we want to change. <coughs> and this means that you have to have a strategy. Strategy in military terms means direction of the war, of the battles. No? In our political uh, language is this, the, 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 the orientation of the class struggle. No? So we have to know which are the classes that confront in a, in a battle. You should know where is the enemy, how much forces he has, how it fights. You have to know your forces, where they are, which is the state of spirit of, of those forces, no? knowing the strong points and the weakened points, no? the state of spirit, I say, no? and you have to know with which arms are they fighting. And that is important because now we have to know which are the arms that the enemy is using for fight in that, uh, in that situation. No? So we have to define which is the strategic enemy, which is the principal enemy or the principal obstacle to go to our goal. Well, f we have to have a goal. No? <laughs> and so that's why I think the conference of Mike, the idea of where we go is very important. But strategy is how to go to that, to that uh, objective. No? Um, uh, we have to know very clearly, analyzing uh, Le Lenin says, the classes that exist in society, which classes are in favor of maintaining the regime, which classes are objectively interested in changing, and in these classes that could be against the system, there could be some very clear for the object that we are searching, and others are only want to change a little. So we have to know very clearly, and we have to be able to see that this is not static. It could change. When the, when the working class is weak, the bourgeois is much more revolutionary than when began the uh, mobilization of the poor, be strong, then these classes that wanted something, they prefer to even support dictatorship, isn't it, in some cases. So we have to be very, very analyzing, and this analysis of classes has to do with the understanding of the structure of society. So we need to have a theoretical instrument to understand society, and that's something that the instrument should have. No? And we have Marx that has learned us to understand this society. No? But as I say to you, it's very important to know which with arms the enemy fights. And which are the arms, the more important arms, that in the world now, the dominant classes or the dominant sectors, because there are now sector of classes, not only you have bourgeois, but it, in all this bourgeois conglomerado, <laughs> you have the transnational, for example and the bourgeois, petit, medium bourgeois, etc. Some that has contradictions with the transnational. And we have to be very careful distinguishing, because the art of politics is to see which is the principal enemy. No? Because if we take all the bourgeois today, we will never do the revolution, I think. <laughs> the other thing is how they fight. And we have to see 
that the principal bombs today are the media or not? They say that the bourgeois system, the capitalist system, doesn't need, in many cases, because unhappily we see that it continues the fight, army struggle and wars in some part of the world, but in general, the arms that they are using are the media. Because if you convince the people that you are living in a wonderful world, nobody will fight against. Or if you convince them that is the only word possible, no one would fight. So w when we are in this, uh, fighting with this enemy, where the arms are the media, where in many of our countries there's no war arms uh, or military presence uh, in the fight, we have to uh, create a strategy to deal with that situation. And the pacific way that we are, or institutional way, is a way that has to do with that. It's not an invention of reformists. I wanted to tell you that it's not only that um, we have the media, this, uh, but also that the people, the people wants peace. Our people doesn't want violence. If the violence comes, they will react because they don't want, no querrán ser esclavos. <laughs> uh, because they don't want to be slaves. No, but the people, if they could, they want to be, to have a life in peace. They want to live, have food, roof, schools, etc. No, they don't want to have violence. And that is important because when Chavez wanted to take out of this corrupted Carlos Andrés Pérez, the president, he began by doing an insurrection, trying to do an insurrection in 92. No? He went in jail because he, he was defeated. And when he went out of jail, he began to uh, go everywhere in Venezuela. And he, s he wanted to do a new insurrection, better prepared now. But he saw, he realized that the people of Venezuela wanted peace. So they discussed the political instrument that was the Movimiento Revolucionario 200. They discussed and they decided to go to the elections because the people didn't want the violence. But that is very important. If you go to this institutional way, you have to change the rules of these institutions. And that's why the most advanced countries in Latin America, the first thing that they uh, plantean, uh, the first things they propose, is a, cons a new constitution to do a constituent assembly and create the new rules of the game. And that was one of the flags of the campaign of Chavez. The other one was corruption, because really corruption is something that is detested by most of the people. So he had the support of middle classes, bourgeois, many, 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 many people that permit him to win the elections with a very important difference with the others. No? So that is important to see what the people are feeling. Sometimes the radical left thinks that they are so smart that they know, and they know that the violence will come, so they have to fight with arms from the beginning. No? And that is the, the, the best way to fracasar, uh, to, to have a failure. No? And, I, and I will say, when, when the Salvadorians went to the mountains, it was not because they liked the, the violence. They went to the mountain because first they have, have wide mobilizations and they were killed in that mobilization. And they had to go to the mountains. They were obliged to. No? But unhappily we did the, the, la propaganda of uh, the arms. No? And uh, as Chafik, uh, you, you know the propaganda? You understand? Yes. 
and Chafit Handel, the, the sec uh, communist secretary of the party, no? he says that we have let the democratic flag we had given to the opposition or to the left that was not as revolutionary. And the revolutionary left, no, the democracy was liberal democracy, bourgeois, no? When the flag of democracy is ours, the left is the more democratic force ever, no? or should be. <laughs> One of the first tasks, what tasks that the political instrument has to do, one is the, to elaborate the strategy. No? <coughs> to determine quite clearly, as we say, the, the principal enemy, the, the forces, uh, all what I have said. But also, no, uh, one of the important tasks, the society we want to construct, the socialism of the 21st century, century, should be built by the people should be a protagonistic society, democratic protagonistic society. And for arriving to that, the political instrument, the most important task, or one of the most important task, is to facilitate the protagonism of people. Instead of going to say to the people, you have to do that because I know that was a style before, you have to go be, I say, uh, pedagogos populares, popular pedagogues, would you say, no? That goes where the people are, try to understand, try to see the knowledge that the people have, because the people has knowledge, no? And try to orientate this knowledge potenciando, potenciando lo mejor, no? Uh, strengthening it. Yeah, because there are, there are the masses or the people is not all good. It's influenced by bad things also. So we have to discover the good things of the people and to, to fight against the, uh, the bad things or the or las desorientaciones que tengan, no? So the, the, the misorientations that might exist amongst the people. So, but to, to deal with this, if we want to have protagonism, we have to think about which spaces should be the ideal spaces for participation. Because, for example, this quantity of person here, if you want to discuss something, is not the good space, isn't it? Uh, it's much better, uh, smaller spaces, and, but so we have to think where, which is the space that you can have the best participation. In, in discussion, this is not the place, but perhaps what Michael says yesterday, this idea of Chavez of the communal council, the communities, little communities, no? uh, where the people know each other, where they don't have, uh, the sh they're not shy because, uh, well, you know. Um, so this uh, is important not only to say you have to participate, but you have to think which are the best spaces for participating. No? Other task is uh, surely we have to fight the, the political interest against the culture that inserted in the people. So we have to deal with that very clearly. And uh, to elaborate, uh, I say, the program and the platform of fight. And the program, mm -hmm. uh, the political instrument should elaborate a, a, a beginning of a program, but that idea should be discussed with the people and <coughs> enriched by the people and perhaps modified by the people. So this should be a dialectic relation between the cadres and, and the people. No? We need to be able to be the orientators or conductors of a wide, wide quantity of people because the enemy is so powerful that we have to be able to do that. No? So. To be able to do that, no, we need, I say, a political instrument, but how it begins the political instrument? It, it doesn't come from the sky. No. Well, the first, I, I distinguish, not I, I, I tell you, Lenin and Latin America, distinguish some steps in the building of the capacity of orientating a wide quantity of people to the object that we fight for. No? And this first moment is what we call the beginning of revolutionary organization. You have to have some cadres, no? 
that wants to do something to construct an instrument to do what we have said. No. Lenin says we need political chiefs, jefes políticos. No? And Gramsci says we need captains. No? And I say to, I wrote to an Italian person why captains are not generals. He didn't know why. <laughs> uh, Gramsci says uh, captains. But in, the idea is for, <laughs> for winning a war, you need people that conduct the war. <clears throat> but Gramsci says that in general, these captains are captains without army in the beginning. But it doesn't matter, he says, because an army without a captain never will win the war. No? So we need captains. And I say that perhaps it's not necessary captain without army if the first moment of the creation of the political organization, or revolutionary organization, is to appeal, to llamar, uh, integrar captains that are in the social movements. So you, the ideal is that in the cadres, in the beginning of a revolutionary organization, you are able to have cadres that are leaders of their movements. So you can have captains with army. That is the idea. But in any case, we need captains. No? That, that is the first period of building a political instrument. This doesn't mean that there is not a rigid thing. No? I, I would say the three moments, and reality could we, we could have big movements, uh, the last uh, we will see, in the first moment, and that will create the cadres, etc. But we, I think it's useful to have first this idea. No? So, <coughs> um, in, the, in that moment, this first moment, is the period of definitions. No? They are leftist, when you you began to discuss about what are you going to do, etc. And this is a period, unhappily, of big debate in the left. And I want uh, Fred to read what Maneiro, Maneiro, Alfredo Maneiro was an intellectual and revolutionary of Venezuela, very smart, that uh, wrote many things. I will cite again Maneiro after. No? And he describes what happened, and I think it's very interesting how he described these debates on the left. Alfredo Monero said that uh, organizations of a communist origin tended to have a gigantic capacity to attack all adversaries, to fight against any adversary in the left, on the left camp, to uh, ridiculize them, convert them into group of schools. Uh, they would invent words such as infra-left, group of school, crazy, anarchos, whatever it was, I don't know. In, in the end, it was a capacity, an incredible capacity of linguistic construction. <laughs> because of this, perhaps the internal struggles of these parties of the left tend to produce a type of vile polemic in which one person ends up being uh, uh, ripped, uh, ripped apart. And no one ever knows exactly why they've been ripped apart they don't even know uh, where, the, where the real debate was at. Um, and instead, this real debate is substituted by a bastardized style of discussion, where they are accused of all sorts of things, including of, of stealing money, of the, the, the fact that, there are, uh, that their um, lifestyle doesn't correspond to that of an activist. All types of things are produced in these, fer uh, in these ferocious polemics as a, as a justifiable way to essentially run away from any type of serious discussion. Well, yes, because it was terrible. We fight, we ha have so much fight in Latin America, and we continue unhappily, huh? that we forget the enemy. <laughs> the enemy was our friends, our comrades of the left. No? Well, so the topic of unity is one that is presented in this moment. No? And I want only to formulate, but not explain, what Fidel has done in unity because Fidel is the artist of unity in, in Cuba, and that's why that country is 
still now, even with all the difficulty there, you know, fighting against imperialism. Fidel says, we have not to start from the, max, the maximum uh, goals, but by the minimum goals. No? Uh, we have to demonstrate in practice which is the good strategy. Because it's, if, you can, if you do good things and they result, this is the best way of attracting others. No? We, we, you, you must not uh, create the unity by forceps. No? Sometimes um, we know that it's good, the unity, so we convoke this, this, this left. That is an ad of siglas, una suma de siglas. So the sum of acronyms. Pero no necesariamente the unity. No? <laughs> we have to appreciate each revolutionary force by itself, not by quotas. If you have 20 militants, you have one. If you have 100 militants, you have five. No. Each different group has the same um, consideration. No? Well, but, and that is, and, and I always cite Fidel when he was of a movement, 26 de Julio, that has the sympathy and the support of 80% of the people in Cuba that, against Batista. No? that fight against Batista. And he, when he win, he didn't say, oh, I am the chief of the 20, 26th July, so all the others have to subordinate to me. He says, I abandon the flag of 26th July because now is the flag of the revolution. And he convoked the Directorio Revolucionario that was one of the other left organization of students, especially, and the Communist Party that was the Socialist Party. And they began to try to do the unity that takes time, like three years. And there comes the sectarism and many things that, well, but finally they have arrived to construct this solid unity that is so important for maintaining the process. No? So um, I want to tell you that uh, I have taken an idea that is so important I think, uh, of uh, a Chilean sociologist, Carlos Ruiz, that says, uh, insisted in the idea that I say in the beginning, we have to understand how the dominant classes dominate. No? And, and this is not, he says, about uh, repression now, is they convince the people that they are the best. So we have to deal with that. And the strategy of the left before was to um, discuss about programs, about, uh, as, as I told you, which is more revolutionary or which things, etc. And he says, we have to convince the people now, it's not propaganda, it's not propaganda, mm -hmm. what uh, will convince. What we have to do is to build alternative ways of doing things in the territories, in territories as um, communal councils or communes, no? or any territory, or the territory in the university or in the workplace. There, we have to build a, a new democratic way of doing. And building that, we demonstrate what society we want to construct. So the people will see the practice. Because people nowadays, I think uh, everywhere, they don't trust too much in words. Because the words are used by the right. They have appropriated the words, our words. You know? and, and, and I say in that moment that happy, and happily also, our practice is very similar to the practice of the politician of the right. So the people hear the same words, see the same practice, they don't want anything about politics and political. So we have to deal with that and we have to construct. And this strategy of building in territories permits us to unite quite better because we are discussing how, to, how should be the school or how should be you know, things concrete. So we don't, it doesn't matter if you are reformist, red, Maoist, or whatever, 
you are a person that has idea of how the school will be. And this helps. And I think that in the university, the big error that we committed in Chile when I was in the university was when Allende arrived, uh, win, we tried to convince people to militate in the, in the Unidad Popular, in, uh, in, el, in el Frente Politico that supports Allende. Instead of worrying about the students, um, uh, for example, um, uh, donde comían, donde uh, well, I, I or cultures, spaces, etc. No? And uh, the right began to take that, and they win. They win the correlation of force in the university before the coup d'etat. And we had the coup d'etat not only because of the military. We had the coup d'etat because we were weak in some things. We have abandoned the work in the base committees of the regular. We had begun to struggle with each other. Huh? So um, coup d'etat comes not only because they have the arms, because we create also the conditions. Well, um, now we would come to the second um, step. That second step, in general, in our countries, has been that these cadres, these captains, began to have armies, began to, o sea, first, detect where are the more advanced sectors of the social movement, and try to understand where they are. This is very important because, in general, in the past, we were parties of the working class, and we thought that we had to go to the unions of uh, the working class. Well, no, that was we didn't discuss, we didn't analyze. We just no oh, go to the go to that uh, enterprise without studying. In Latin America, in general. Who moves are not the working class, and in the sense uh, the, the el estrecho concepto de clase obrera. No, in the very very narrow sense of what the working class represents. Because the working class has been very weakened by neoliberalism. First, many many have gone to up, outs, outsourcing. Outsourcing, yeah. yeah. Flexibility, etc., has so the working class is not a group or social group that is moving. No? Uh, so we have to see which are the sector that moves. Or if we have sector that moves, or if we don't have, we have to analyze which could be the possible sector more prepared objectively to move. No? And concentrate our forces and our action in those sectors. And how to do that? By detecting the natural leaders. This is very important. Because if you win a natural leader, you win the, influ the el campo de influencia que tiene ese leader. No? So you win also that sector that, it, that leader has influence over. So there are very many experiences in Latin America about that. Uh, Jaime Huilo, que comandante, says uh, that he, when he went to go to work in a countryside, he uh, detected the patriarca. Patriarca? Patriot. Yeah. Patriot. Yeah. And when he win the patriarca to the revolution, all the community was win. No? In the case of FPL, of El Salvador, the Popular Front for Liberation, yeah, they detect that the and this, the organization of the professor was the more uh, combative. Yeah. No? Exactly. Combative? Yeah. yeah. So, and that organization influenced the students and also the country, the, the peasants, because they have contacted these professors in the countryside. <coughs> so, working with them permit them to work quite other sectors. No? So, that is very important. And I say that the Political organization could be measure the, his maturity no? by the quantity of natural leaders that that conquer, not necessarily to the organization. Uh, it's not that we, but 
conquers to our project. And that is one of the things that we have to think. Where are the natural leaders? And if the natural leaders are not with, are not in our organization or not in our project, we have to think why? And what are we doing bad? Because we had to conquer this natural leader. We won't do the revolution if we have natural leaders that, oh, mo the, the, the big quantity that are not in our project. Huh? And also, well, I, I, I have an idea that I don't want to lose. Um, sometimes when, for example, we are discussing who will be the rector of the, uni el rector de la universidad, no se dice rector, no? The, the vice chancellor. In the university, no? Sometimes we, we, there is a wonderful person that has all the qualities, but is not in the party. So we choose another that is not as good, but is in the party, if we are able to. No? So I think that is an error. We have to choose the best, conquer the best for the project. But let him be what he is. In, in Chile, the popular unity, we had the terrible thing that for being in any uh, puesto de gobierno, you have to be a militant of one of the parties. And that is an error, I think. In any post in government, you had to be a member of the party. I want to tell you what Maneiro did in Venezuela. There were 10 persons that came out of the Communist Party. And instead of trying to build a thing in the, in the room, they began to see, well, what is moving in the country? And they were moving in Sidor, the metallurgicos, the workers in the... The steel workers. Yeah. They were moving the, in the university, the students and professor, and they are moving in one of the uh, neighborhoods of Caracas, Katia. So these 10 persons concentrate in those. And he says, why not we, we can construct by taking the leaders, that idea no, that I told you. No? And they sent one of the 10 went to Sidor to work as a worker. No? And it's interesting that when the movement of the university stops because that the mass movement goes in waves. So in a moment, the university stops. Don't, so they didn't insist on that. They went to the places where there was movement. And Lenin, Lenin worked with the workers uh, in the a strict sense because those were the more important sectors of the society that, that were um, moving in that moment in Russia against the Tsarism. It wasn't because he intellectually knew that the working class was. No, it was because the real working class was moving. And that is important, I think. The third moment is when you pass from being able to orientate the more advanced movements, social movements, to be able to be the head of a wide, wide mobilization. In that moment, you really, Lenin says, you really are the vanguard. We don't use the term vanguard today because it's so, so bad use, you say, quemado. It's a you say term that? that's been burnt. What is being a vanguard? It's being the capable to conduct the class struggle. So you cannot be a vanguard by definition. Oh, we, Fred, we are the vanguard. <laughs> we have to demonstrate in practice that you are able to conduct. No? But as the word is, we prefer to say, well, which is the moment where the political instrument is able to conduct the white masses? That is the moment where you, and in general, this moment is presented when the society is in crisis and many mobilizations comes out. I wanted to speak, but I have no time, about the different process uh, in, in the evolution of the movement, uh, you have periods of, of calm, periods of revolutionary period, insurrectional period, contra-revolutionary, but I cannot speak if you want after you ask. No? <coughs> but when you are really able to, to orientate the wide mobilizations is when there is 
a situation in the society of crisis that is not economical crisis necessary, also political. So the people reject the regime that has done whatever. No? So in that moment, uh, the ideas that has been promoting by the, the political revolutionary organization are assimilated by that wide uh, quantity of persons. And this means that you have the hegemony, hegemony, hegemonia, no? that uh, is that, to win the head and the heart of the people, to be able to them to appropriate the project. Hmm? And in that moment, you are really, you have the really army, the real army that you need for winning the battles. And that is the moment when it is well conducted that you can uh, have a, a revolution. No? O sea, but in, in our case, that we can uh, win the battle of winning the government. We, we want to go to that goal, socialism, uh, and we decided to win, uh, to, uh, to use the institutional way, and we uh, arrived to convince most of the people that our project is good and they vote for us. How to build this big thing? What can we do to begin, even if there are not immediate condition of explosion, how could, could we construct this wide front? No? And I think that it's very interesting what the Uruguayan says and many others, also in Salvador, etc. We have to build a platform of fight or a minimum program, but more than a minimum, a, a platform that permits all the sectors that has contradiction with the principal enemy to be interpreted by that platform. And that, again, a critique to those who think that for being revolutionary, you have to put very revolutionary goals. And if you put things, little things for the petit bourgeois or for the bourgeois, uh, you are not revolutionary. No? Many times, a radical and I think Lenin said to the student in Chile that a, ra a radical program would, would produce is the contrary. Instead of winning, you, you lose forces. No? Another thing, and I, I think it's very important, is to create spaces where people could converge and where you could give tasks to every people. And here comes what I think is and I would like very much you to, o sea, to have a dialectic thing here that you tell me if it is true or not what I'm saying, is uh, consultas populares, referendum, or plebiscite. You, you know that we can do uh, legal referendums in some countries of Latin America, but we can do also not legal. So we have done this in practice, both the legal things, no? and in the case of the ALCA, of the, the ALCA, the... Uh, the FTAA, the Free Trade of Americans Agreement. Yeah, you know that we have arrived to stop that, the presidents. But before the president, we had had a big, big campaign in at least three countries, Brazil, Argentina, and Ecuador, no? where <coughs> and the, the organizer of, the first, of that consultation was the church with the parties, the movement, the social movement. And the idea was, well, to go house by house explaining the people what means that. No? And, and why I like so much this? First, because they recruitaban uh, recruited. people, not necessarily of the party, of the union, but people that wanted to to do something and doesn't know what to do. How many times people want and we don't create the spaces for the people to develop themselves. And these people receive the explanation. So they were, why? And they had to explain to the others. And in this going to the houses, 
the petit bourgeois, or so if you say the, the, the middle classes, students, especially, etc., that go, they had to go to the poor sectors. And seeing the, the, the la pobreza, the po poverty. Yeah, poverty, they see that and they were, uh, it, politically, they change. No? So it's, it's, uh, it's not only that you give tasks for a goal that is very important. No? But also the change of the people doing that. So I think that, for example, yesterday somebody says that uh, we have to do something with Telesur. You know that Telesur has been attacked. In, in, uh, is, uh, in Argentine, they, they are going to, they had, get out the money. I don't know how to say, but you understand. They gave the money in the government, now not. No? So. Somebody says, well, the, the solution is that uh, other governments will continue doing. But I think that we, do, we must not, as left, consider always the governments, the money of the governments, even if, uh, our government. We have to, ourselves, the left should defend Telesur. No? And I say, I propose this idea here, I don't know what we, if we do a campaign like going house by house as possible, explaining what means the media in this society, what means Telesur, and asking them a dollar. I don't know, a dollar? Well, even a dollar. It doesn't matter the money. What matters is you give tasks, you produce changes, no? So I let you decide if we can do something about Telesur. Uh, well, this means that uh, in, in the case of uh, Uruguay, I told him, but I will want to repeat here, the senior, the, no, who will allow us? The pensioners. The pensioners were the most, the, uh, the biggest activists. And we have to think also, because the left also doesn't think. We are living in a world where the pensioners are in general growing. And we never consider them as a force, as activists, or do we? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> we have to, to explain. A ver, léeme. Deslegitimar el sistema denunciando sus estructuras y lógicas. So, delegitimize the system by denouncing its structures and logics. Yeah. O sea, and that is what Chavez has done. When Chavez decided to push social in the 21 century as, as a, a word to, to define the goal, uh, I, they say that Fidel says, no, you should not. Socialism is, uh, is not seen good by, it's true. In Venezuela, people didn't like socialism. But Chavez began to explain in any time, you know that he speaks very much, no? <laughs> Every time, this is capitalism, this is socialism, this is capital, this is socialism with little examples of the people living life. No? So now, in Venezuela, the majority of the people, 54% was the last poll, 54%. accept socialism, as, uh, as, uh, like socialism. No? So this is something that we have done. And the final is that we have, I think, to win to local governments and transform those local governments so people would see, ah, this is the government that the left could do. And you know why Lula, a worker, a, a metallurgic worker, win when, when, when Lula, in the campaign, the opposition says, Lula, a worker doesn't know how to deal with the government. What was the answer of Lula? See our governments, local governments. This is what we, I want to do. So I think it's a good strategy to concentrate no? also in this kind of thing. Well, I think that I will stay here. I think that I haven't thanked this invitation. And I think that I haven't say that I see the leaders of uh, the organization that have invited us doing the little work, selling the journal, being in the mill. I like that. That.